Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome one and all. Whew, we got a lot to talk about. We have a lot to talk about. Um, <clears throat> so, while I was prepping, I heard there was an announcement coming up. Stand by for an announcement. Stand by for an announcement. And so the announcement, of course, is Kate has cancer. Hi, Black Queen. Um, <clears throat> okay. Okay. Let me just start off with the timeline. Connie Bomber. Hey, Connie Bomber. Let me just start off with the timeline because a lot of this does not make sense. If we go back to the release of Endgame, in the release of Endgame, at some point they said that there were two people that were named as racists. And so Pierce Morgan, hoghead Pierce Morgan, he blurts out that is um, Kate. He blurts out Kate, and then he blurts out Charles. That is Kate and Charles. Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales, and Charles, uh, King Charles III. And so, of course, they went on this big charm offensive. And I must admit, at that point, I don't think Kate ever looked worse. I don't think she ever looked worse. She was pale, very gaunt, very fragile looking. So obviously something was wrong. And then, of course... As we've gone over the timeline, there was the very curious thing that happened on the 28th of December. I mean, now at this point, I have that date committed to memory, the 28th of December. And this mysterious motorcade racing toward, I believe they said it was George the Sixth or whatever hospital, St. George, whatever hospital it was. Hey, Mystic Toxin. And so there's that going on. And then, of course, you all got to remember, that was not news. The news media, for, for the most part, the news media does not talk about that. They will not talk about that. There is no mention of that uh, 8.30 p.m. motorcade. And so on the 17th of January, another date I have committed, and I'm terrible with dates, but I have gone over this so many times. I'm terrible with dates. And so they say, and I slept late that day, no surprise, I slept late. And they said, Kate Middleton has cancer. I mean, I'm sorry, not Kate Middleton. She had abdominal surgery. I'm looking at the big headline. Um, they said she had abdominal surgery, okay? And then from that point, they said that it wasn't cancerous. And then the most bizarre thing happened. Could you imagine what it was? That King Charles III has prostate problems, an enlarged prostate. I can't remember how they worded it, but I know it was prostate. And once again, but don't you worry, because it is not cancer. So the two people who had recently been accused of being racist, in both instances, I still say, you know, it could have been all of them, but I still say it was Willie. <clears throat> Willie is the one who asked about the baby's skin color and was preoccupied with it and could not stop asking, what do you think is going to happen? How is that going to look for the family? 
And so then fast forward, fast forward to the 5th of February, another date which bizarrely I have committed to memory, the 5th of February, oh, you know what? Do you know what? Charles does have cancer. But we caught it early. And we are not going to tell you what kind of cancer it is. Okay. And so all this time goes by where Kate is not seen. Kate is not seen. Charles is seen out and about doing his duty. But also I'm I'm skipping ahead because I forgot to mention the fact that we only saw William head toward the London clinic, but never go into it. But they said he stayed. I don't remember him driving away, as a matter of fact. I don't remember seeing footage of him driving away. And probably because they didn't want you to know how short a stay it was. And then Charles supposedly goes to the hospital, goes straight to Kate's bedside, and then he goes for whatever treatment that he did or did not have. And then Charles, Charles um, has his treatment. And then again, January 5th, he has cancer. And let's not forget that uh, Camilla was popping in and out of the hospital like a jack in the box. Repeatedly in a three day period, I think she was in and out of that hospital at least seven times. And even managed to do the occasional costume change. And every time she was in and out of the hospital, she reappeared with a big smile on her face, which was very curious. Charles eventually emerges from the hospital. And again, on February 5th, that's when they said that he had cancer. But they just won't tell us what kind of cancer it is which is, again, surprising because you were so forthcoming when you wanted to tell us that you got big nuts or whatever the symptoms were, that you had swollen gonads, pardon my French, um, but then you don't want to tell us what kind of cancer it is. And then, of course, such was born Where's Kate Middleton? Because it was just, it was very odd that Kate was nowhere to be found, but yet Charles, the one who's, what, almost twice her age, and he's still working and still greeting people and still no Kate Middleton. Uh, let's see, Black Queen says, so they are saying the two who question Archie's skin color suddenly struck, uh, struck, uh, struck with uh, cancer. Don't believe it. The lies are coming home to roost. Very good point. Very good point, Black Queen. Thank you so much for the super sticker. I think that yesterday when they had the TMZ half hour special, that that triggered something. And they felt like we've got to get out here and we got to say something. We got to say something. Um, Connie Balmer, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you for joining us here on Royal Sussex. And thank you for being a member also. You and, of course, uh, Black Queen, thank you both for being members of Royal Sussex. So, <clears throat> there you have it. I have no reason to believe that they are telling the truth. Now, they have lied too many times. They have lied too many times. I don't know when to believe these people. And as I said before, if for some reason we have gotten something wrong, there is a excellent chance that Whatever it is, we are not aware of. It's because we have been misled. I don't know when to believe these people. I don't 
know when to believe them. Because it just, it seems rather odd to me that you could, I mean, look at what they have in common. The two that have been accused of being racist, the, the two that have been accused of asking about Archie's skin tone are the same two people who were being treated in the same hospital who did not have cancer, and now they do have cancer. And that being one of the finest hospitals in the land, one would assume that you would get the very finest treatment. That you would get the very finest treatment and that you should be well taken care of, that every possible test that they could do. And then, you know, from time to time, I use the term pregnant pause. That is when you go a long time without saying anything. And, you know, I'm sure most of you know what that means. This is the mother of all pauses here in that you go for surgery on the 17th. And if, if I'm correct, I think a biopsy, you get the information back no later than what, two weeks later? It is now the 22nd of March. And once again, you won't tell us what kind of cancer it is. You won't tell us what kind of cancer it is. That is curious. That is curious. And again, I do believe there was something, and I I don't know how many of you all saw the TMZ. I didn't hear it. I've only been able to listen to parts of it. Um, but you won't tell us what kind of cancer it is. That is very curious. Uh, Joan Garcia says, it's like uh, the boy who cried wolf too often. Here, here, Joan Garcia. Thank you for the super chat and for being a member of Royal Sussex. Exactly. Exactly. And once again, if the intention was to set off a storm of conspiracy theories, If this was meant to cover for something else, it is incredibly effective because it it begs more questions than it answers. This does not answer the question, where is Kate Middleton? Where have you been for over 80 days? Where have you been for 80 days? And if this is what the 80-day period was about, why did it take so long to talk about it? This has been a complete communication failure, a complete communication failure. And nobody is responsible for the doubts except for Kensington Palace, except for William and Kate. Had they been more forthcoming, had they not pulled these little uh, pranks with these photos, it seems as though the photos were designed, or the photos and or video, that they were designed to cause confusion. At the point when they discovered that the royal family had become the butt of the joke on the international stage. At the point that they discovered that the royal family has become um, a punchline, which was a week ago, even longer than that. That's when it was time to come forward and say, you know what, it's cancer. But this long pause, this very curious long pause is giving me pause. I don't know why I should believe it. I don't know why I should believe it. It's just, it's, I'm telling you, 
Something is not adding up, whether it's true or not true. What are they covering up? What are they covering up? There is because we all know that the main thing that is paramount to the institution today and tomorrow and for the near future is William must be protected at all costs. Do I believe that this institution that called Megan a bully, that this institution that has fed uh, Megan and Harry, a blood prince Harry to the wolves, do I believe them? That these people that have turned against a child of that family after all the hell that he's been through, do I believe them? Why should I believe them? I don't have a good answer, or should I say, I don't have a good reason to believe them because they have lied on so many occasions. They told a bald-faced lie about Megan being a bully, thus bullying her even more just because they were afraid of what was going to be exposed on the Oprah Winfrey interview. Why should I trust them today? I believe Megan 100. No doubt, I believe everything that she said is true. I believe Harry, everything he said is true. Who I don't believe is an institution that has lied about them on multiple occasions. I have no just cause to ever believe them. Gracie Mpuwabi says, I guess cancer worked for Charles. He got sympathy. Why not go for it that again for Kate Middleton? Thank you very much, Gracie Mpuwabi. Thank you very much. That sounds reasonable to me. Sounds reasonable to me. It worked the first time. And had they not been boxed in a corner with that questionable video the other day, had they have not been boxed in the corner with the, um, I suppose, becoming a light, a late night talk show joke, would they have even told us today? Because it seems to me that they have only told us because they have to, not because they wanted to, which makes me question is what I'm hearing true and accurate information? Uh, Black Queen says, Barons, they use the same uh, powder to uh, they used on the 18th century pics uh, to make her look, um, is that sickly? In a couple of months, they'll uh, say she's miraculously cured. Hear, hear. Hear, hear. Of course, there's got to be, and of course, you know what else, uh, Black Queen? This takes her off the, the schedule for all of 2024, for as long. And again, the video. Kate, who is so terribly unwell, shot out of that farmer's market like a cannonball. Kate, who is so unwell, emerged from that farmer's market faster than Pierce Morgan ran out of the ITV Good Morning Britain studios. Uh, thank you so much for the Cash App uh, CD. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kate ran out of that farmer's market. That was a very brisk pace carrying a shopping bag for someone who is in the struggle of their life. I have to say, for someone who is in the struggle of their life, I think that body, well, body language, you know, in considering the body language that day at that very brisk pace, 
it just did not seem to me like someone who was in such a delicate state. Now, admittedly, uh, actually, as I look at this photo, she, uh, I don't know if she looks thinner or not. I really don't. Although, if you want to make yourself look heavier, then horizontal stripes is one way to broaden your appearance. So perhaps maybe that is something that you would do if you have lost a lot of weight and you're feeling self-conscious, then you would go with the horizontal stripe. So that, you know, just from what I know about staging things, that would make sense that you would want to wear the horizontal stripes. You know, <clears throat> Colleen, one doesn't get chemo preventatively. Wished her well uh, for her children. Yeah, we wish her well for her children's sake, definitely. But that has been a big question. And if that for some reason, if that for some reason is not an accurate way for one to get treated, then I'm afraid they would have just stepped into it again big time today. But people are going to pick this apart. And again, if this is for a cover for something else, if this is to give cover for something else, first of all, shame on them. And secondly, it's not going to work. This is not going to work. If the whole purpose of this was to give cover for something else, I'm afraid they have fallen, fallen very short of the target. They are, they, are, they are going to find themselves wanting in terms of their character because there's no way in the world that people... Like, there was a doctor on the... Um, TMZ or was it on CNN? There was a doctor that was pointing out some inconsistencies with everything that we've heard so far. Now, Susie Q, now Susie Q, I did work on that thing for you and I see you're back. I hope that that uh, helped. Um, if for some reason that this is uh, an AI generated thing, which they are getting much better at that. I don't suppose it is, but again, at this point, and this is when I really feel terrible. I do feel bad in that I have to doubt everything that comes out of that palace. Everything that comes out of that palace, now I have to put a huge question mark over it. And if you all remember, if you all remember, in the early days of Kate's alleged surgery, how many times did you hear me say, I don't want to believe, I find it difficult to accept the idea that a world-renowned medical center, <clears throat> a medical uh, facility, a medical hospital, I was troubled with the idea that they may have put these people in position to cover for them or to lie for them. And I still feel the same way. I trust doctors. I trust nurses. I trust everyone in the field of medical science. You just have to, number one. And number two, I, I need to have that trust. And so I choose to trust them. And pray that, you know, that they are given the guidance in their treatment for myself or for my loved ones. But I don't, I don't like the idea that this casts doubt over said doctors, nurses, or any medical institution whatsoever. But is it above them? to step out of their um, promise of being impartial and, and, 
and and lacking all prejudice and bias as medical professionals, would they lie for the royal family? Would they allow their names to be used by the royal family to perpetuate a lie? Just like the whole thing with the medical records. How does the timing of this announcement, how does this go along with the idea that someone may have her medical records, although I find it hard to believe that anyone is trying to broker her medical records, seeing that Charles III was in the same hospital. And I would assume that Charles III's records would have more of a value than Kate Middleton's records, seeing that he is the head of state. I promise you guys, this is this is not going to silence skepticism. The skeptics will not be silenced by this. If anything, they've only just made a bad situation worse. And if for some reason that nobody believes them, it is not any individual's fault. It is that of Kensington Palace. Because the rollout of this entire medical situation has a question mark over it because of the way they have misled. I think they have even gone as far as tried to misrepresent. They've been, it seems like they have been having fun or laughing literally laughing at the public with these photos and that very odd video. Jules Ryder says, ever since Harry and Meghan left, things have gone from bad to worse since Charles became king and made his wife queen. Nothing but BS and drama is going on. Meghan and Harry will always be their targets. And that's true. That's true, because Harry and Meghan has been very convenient distractions from the main things that are going on. But Harry and Meghan, very wisely, do not give them a lot to talk about. And so they find themselves needing to go that extra mile. Now, with the release of Omid Scobie's book, which was what, the end of November, the beginning of December, it seemed as though it triggered a panic with that institution. Not that they were not already in trouble, but it was the big publicity stunt, all for one and one for all, um, we're a team, and one by one, illness seems to have taken them down. Charles, Kate, uh, Camilla is said to have already been uh, not well. And William, whatever, whether it's something chemically induced or whatever it is, he's not 100. He is visibly smaller than he was in December. He, uh, whether it's, like I said, chemical or not, I don't think it's something altogether, you know, innocent if you will, but something is, is a bit wobbly about him. But yes, they have gone from bad to worse. And December, um, they were, you know, in high gear, but then that's when Kate really started looking her worst. Thank you so much for your comment. Uh, uh, let's see. Rohini says, take note, derangers, racism and hate gives you cancer. <laughs> what was that, Rohini? Take a note, derangers. Racism and hate gives you cancer. Something is eating at them. Something is eating at them. Robin Hyde says, Royal Sussex, I agree with you wholeheartedly. It was being obvious, uh, it's being obvious sometime, something much sinister is going on. They are liars. They have lied repeatedly. And I just don't know when to believe them. 
I don't know when to believe them, but we do know that at all costs, William must be protected. Whatever happens, William has to be protected. And you start with William and work your way out. William is at the very center of the storyline because William must be protected. With 20 months membership, Annie Bennett, I agree with you, Baron. Why should we believe what comes out of her mouth? They did not believe Megan when she said she felt the way she felt. Thank you for your 20 months membership. And uh, Aquarius Koo, hi, Baron. I'm still very suspicious about this news. Here, here. Thank you for your 11 months men membership. And Beverly Jackson says, Baron, I pray that Kate is well. And this is not an act because my young nephew died of cancer last year. And I have seen firsthand how destructive and painful cancer can be. Thank you very much, Beverly Jackson. And you speak for a lot of us. Trust me when, you, when I say you speak for a lot of us. Aquarius Cool said, oh, it's a super sticker. Thank you so much, Aquarius Cool. Oh, and thank you for being a member as well. Cheers. Thank you so much. And God save the content creators. Here, here. Okay. There is a filter over the picture. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Um, it is filtered. It has been uh, tuned in some kind of way. That's for sure. Uh, let me see. Harolyn Baker says, hello, Baron. Why isn't Willie Leak sitting there holding his wife? Uh, and she hasn't uh, lost one strand of that wiglet. <laughs> Why is she squinting like that? A uh, very good question. If she's been indoors a lot, then that would explain it. And then too, it seems as there's some though there's some blooms around, she might suffer from allergies. So um, it could be a number of reasons for her appearance. But I'm going to tell you the one that I've, I notice is that um, she is wearing horizontal stripes. And when one wants to appear larger, you know, if you want to appear more to have more mass, that is one way to trick the eye. So. Um, but it doesn't appear that she's lost her sense of vanity. And so. You know, if that was Kate at the farmer's market, then there is an excellent chance because she was not wearing makeup or it appeared that she didn't wear a lot of makeup that day. If indeed that was Kate Middleton and I'm still not convinced it was, then that part of it would look very convincing. It's just it was so odd that the person that burst out of the farmer's market was moving incredibly fast for someone who supposedly is suffering from cancer from for someone who had abdominal surgery uh, that was carrying a shopping bag in terms of the body language that was not adding up. That was where is the nearest restroom pace? And I do mean I need the restroom now. That's the pace in which this cancer-stricken Princess of Wales was moving. That does not make sense to me. That does not make sense to me. Um, I, I'm not going to say sorry. I, I find it difficult to believe anything they say because I'm not sorry. I'm sorry that they have put people in a position where you have to doubt everything, but that is what they asked for. If you known that you had cancer all this time, first of all, why did it take so long? And second of all, tell us what it is. Tell us what it is. Let me say this again. In the fall, the two people that were accused of being racist in Omid Scobie's book, but not from Omid Scobie himself, 
but from a translation uh, editing error, a first draft was turned into a final draft and a printed edition. And that was not even for the UK, that was for the Netherlands. And it took Hoghead Pierce Morgan to tell everybody what was in the first draft. And then there was this big charm offensive in December where the two people that were accused of being racist, King Charles III and Kate Middleton, uh, they were um, supposedly part of this Fab Four that was going to show the world that they were still in control of things. Albeit, admittedly, Kate looked her absolute worse at that point. I had never seen her look so bad. So whether it was cancer, whether it was just some other type of abdominal surgery, if there was a surgery, whether there was a mental break, whatever it was that we still have not been told exactly what it was, but whatever it was, it, um, it had her looking her absolute worst. Then the 38th of December, the mysterious motorcade. Then the 17th of January, there is the surgery. Don't worry, it's not cancerous. And then there's Charles. Oh, yeah, a pre-scheduled surgery. Don't worry, it's not cancer, abdominal surgery. Then there's Charles with his prostate. Don't worry, it's not cancer. February the 5th, guess what? Charles got cancer, but he was going through treatment, whatever. Then, uh, what is today's date? The 22nd of March. The 22nd of March, almost 90 days, almost three months from the last time we had a confirmed, honest-to-goodness appearance of Kate Middleton, right? Last seen Christmas Day. And so March the 22nd, Kate sits on the bench in this very soft golden light with her hair, her hair extensions, uh, blow dried and and curled and wavy and she's got the mermaid hair everything is picture perfect it almost looks like an ad for some type of medication and she tells us she has cancer she didn't tell us last week or the week before she didn't tell us a month ago and now that she's told us just like charles she won't tell us what type of cancer it is. But she says, don't worry, you're not alone. So if you just have any general cancer, I generally have cancer too, and you're not alone. Nothing suspicious about that, I suppose. Undergoing preventative chemotherapy, Kate reveals she has cancer. Princess of Wales, 42, bravely announces she is battling disease and undergoing preventative chemotherapy, but reassures nation, I am going to be okay in highly emotional and unprecedented video message. And also they should say untimely, because if this is the case, this should have happened a while ago. A month or two ago, this should have happened. And still, they won't tell us what kind of cancer it is. So even though now we're supposed to be forthcoming, just like Charles, we are still holding something back. Uh, Robin Hyde says, Bear and I agree with you wholeheartedly. They made, they have made it more obvious that something more sinister is going on. Uh, they are all liars. Uh, well, thank you, Robin Hyde. I don't know if I read that already, but thank you very much. And also thank you for being here on Royal Sussex. And uh, Truth is Truth said, preventative or uh, pro 
what is that? Pro, pro what is it? Prophylact prophy prophylactic? Is that right? Chemotherapy is frequently given. I'm an oncology nurse. Okay. All right. All right. I've never heard that before. Preventative chemotherapy is frequently given. I'm an oncology nurse. Well, thank you for your comment. And also thank you for being a member of Royal Sussex. I appreciate that. Thank you for supporting this channel. Okay. Okay. Um, still, I have to say the timing of this is a bit confusing for me. Uh, Cyphervid. Oh, thank you for the super sticker. Thank you so much. Mm. Now, CMAC2, I could not speak to that one. Uh, with this announcement, I can't help to wonder is this if this means that there's something closer to the announcement that, uh, ooh, wow, you guys have all kinds of theories. Um, you know, I, I, I have my doubts about that. I have my doubts about that, of course. Um, to be honest with you, I can't tell you what's coming down the pike. I cannot tell you what's coming down the pike because it is just very, it's also very odd the way they have timed this. Mystic Toxin says, at this point, I trust Bourbon Street gutter water more than I trust the British Royal Family announcements, save the ones that come uh, from Archwell, of course. Thank you so much. Yes, we, we trust the, the Archwellian uh, members of the Royal Family. Thank you, Mystic Toxin. Uh, let me see. The hacking on December 3rd at that hospital. What does that mean? Uh, no, the hacking. Um, let me see. The, the hacking on December 3rd. Let me see. Was it December 3rd? No, it could have been December 3rd. Um, I don't know when they, uh, I don't know when the hacking took place. But was there a hacking on the 3rd? I don't recall that. Oh, okay. So I just got um, a message from a nurse friend of mine that says, preventative chemotherapy is a medical intervention where drugs are administered to individuals who are at risk of developing a particular disease with the goal of preventing or delaying the onset of the disease. It often, uh, I'm sorry, it's often used in context with infectious diseases such as malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV where medication can reduce the risk of infection or progression of the disease. So does she have uh, cancer or not? Mm. Mm. Now, that is someone I know for sure is a medical professional. Um, like I said, like I said, this is going to open them up to more questions that they could not possibly, or maybe that is the point. Maybe the point of it is to bog the public's op opinions or the public's preoccupation with the royal family. Maybe that is the point, is to bog us down with more questions without answers. Maybe that's the point of it. As they said in whatever movie that was with Debbie Morgan, maybe there is no point, and that's the point. Was it Eve's Bayou? Maybe there is no point, and that is the point, that there is no point to it. Maybe this is another attempt to distract. And I'm, I'm not ashamed or embarrassed to say that, Maybe this is yet another attempt to distract, to draw our, our attention away from something else. And if that is the case, it is pretty diabolical. It is quite diabolical if that was their intention, was to draw our attention 
away from something else. But absent the absolute truth, I don't know what else it could possibly be. Uh, okay. Yes, preventative chemotherapy can be used for certain types of cancer. This approach is often employed in cases where individuals are at high risk of developing certain types of cancer due to genetic predisposition, environmental factors, or prevention, uh, I'm sorry, previous history of a precancerous condition. Preventative chemotherapy may be recommended as part of a comprehensive strategy to reduce the risk of cancer development or reoccurrence. However, the specific use of, of preventative chemotherapy for cancer prevention depends on individual factors and should not and should be carefully considered and discussed with a healthcare provider. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, friend and medical professional for that update. Hmm. Well, there you go. There you go. So, um, again, I, I still believe that all of this is going to lead to more questions. I do believe all of this is going to lead to more questions. So, uh, buckle your seatbelts, everybody, because this <laughs> This is going to be um, this is going to be quite the topic for the next few days, I believe. This is going to be quite the topic. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm trying to figure out where I left off here. Okay, truth is truth. Okay, I think I went back way too far. Somehow, I think I scrolled in the wrong direction. But, uh, oh, Elaine Parker, thank you so much for the super sticker. And as always, thank you so much for being here. Mm, that's why you don't wear horizontal stripes. Thank you for that insight. Okay. Well, Tashmac, um, okay, well, given the explanations that I just shared with you about the um, preventative chemotherapy, um, I guess, I don't know if that's like an individual choice or not, but given the, the, the video from the other day, and of course, the royal families, I guess, uh, habit of of making stuff up as they go along. I mean, whether it's protocols or whether you know it's it's to do with who visits while in hospital or whatever the case may be. Some things they just make up their own rules, and a lot of it may be down to individual choice, but. You know, I don't think that that's an indictment by itself that she's not wearing a face mask because um, given the fact that this is a very important speech that she read or statement that she read, carefully orchestrated statement, and that she's not in a crowded situation, I wouldn't say that that alone should be an indictment about whether or not a person has cancer. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can... Uh, pick apart and say this looks consistent and that doesn't. But the thing is, um, what type of cancer is it? We don't even know what kind of cancer it is. Chef Sandy Love says, I'm sorry, but I don't believe a word. All the, uh, ex I don't believe a word at all, et cetera. Uh, thank you, Chef Sandy Love. Thank you for being a member of Royal Sussex. And I think you're in very good company because this would satisfy a lot of things that need to be uh, distracted away from or that they need distractions away from. It would satisfy a lot. That's why I said I do believe that this is going to open them up. 
they may not like the outcome of this. I think they're going to be very disappointed with the outcome because already there are people that are going to pick every single word and every strand of those hair extensions apart. Uh, McKenzie uh, says, uh, I'm a 41 athlete and single mom. If Kate, an a, a healthy, active woman my age with the best care on earth has cancer, then what the Frappuccino don't they share what kind? Uh, yeah, yeah, why won't they share what kind? And uh, it would be helpful for women like me. Now I'm paranoid. Thank you, Mackenzie. Thank you. And thank you for being a member of Royal Sussex. As I said, and I'll say it again, why won't you say what kind of cancer? Why did it take so long to mention cancer? And if not for the TMZ video yesterday, if not from this uh, for the global pushback that the royal family, this is a panic mode situation for the royal family. They have they haven't been this despised since Diana. Since Diana died mysteriously and tragically in that tunnel in Paris, I don't think the royal family has ever been so despised. Even after the Oprah Winfrey interview, they have not been this despised. And the best part about it is it has nothing to do with Harry and Meghan. Not one bit. The only thing that I could say is that they're, uh, especially, let, let me put this on William. William's need to, uh, I guess, uh, pull every follicle of hair remaining in his head out to try to best Harry in any way he can is the reason why they're in this situation. Because they have been fighting this one-sided war that they have waged against Harry and his family. They have waged this war against Harry and Meghan and even children. They have been going to war with children over their names, over their titles, and over their birthrights. And so would I believe that the people that have gone to war with an infant child over her name. And make no mistake, if the royal family, if the monarchy said tomorrow, don't do this or don't do that, leave Harry and Meghan alone, they wouldn't even have to say it. They would just have to show them real family support. A lot of that vitriol would go away, but they won't do it. They did not care that Harry and Meghan lost an unborn child. They did not make an official statement after Meghan announced that she had a miscarriage. They didn't say anything and they don't care. The worst part about it is they don't care. And the abuse will commence first thing in the morning. That has been their approach. They go to bed, turn lights out, and the next day, more leaking and more briefing from Kensington Palace. If a family that cares so little for a blood prince and his wife and his children that they would strip their security away at, during a global pandemic, strip their security away, Why would I trust them? Why should I trust anything that they say when I know the history of how malicious and contemptible they can be? Why would I trust them? Why should I trust anything that they say? And if anybody has benefited from this hate campaign against the Sussexes, it's the person that's sitting there telling us that she has cancer. That has been the most direct recipient of the hate campaign. And I will admit, it does affect the way I look at her and whatever her situation is. I can't say that I cannot unsee 
what has been done. The Scorpio in me says, I can't pretend otherwise. Thank you, Mackenzie. Uh, Kim says, Baron and Squatties, long time no see. Here, here, it has been a while. But will uh, the real Slim Shady, <laughs> will the real Slim Shady please stand up? Because we have seen five different versions of Kate so far, starting with the car ride with Mama Middleton. What the hell is going on? You know what? You get three bells for that. You get three bells. Will the real Slim Shady? <laughs> oh, thank you for that, Kim. I really did need that. Thank you. And um, that is a good question. At what point will we see the? This is another incarnation of Kate. It really is. It really is. And I'm trying to figure out which is the one that I should compare to the Abraham Zapruda film. Because I watched Abraham Zapruder's film of the John F. Kennedy assassination over and over again. And every time, I, I must admit, I see something different. So this, um, this, this whole thing is going to be something that um, divides people as to what are we really seeing? What does it mean? And uh, as always, what are they trying to hide? What are they trying to hide? It's a shame that it's got to be that way, but it is not of our doing. This is something that started with uh, the whole rollout of uh, Kate just had abdominal surgery. It's still so very strange. I don't know what is real and what is the palace doing some type of spin i don't know what's the spin the 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 kensington palace the kensington palace william harry's brother harry's brother william harry says in his book that we both promised that we would not brief against one another the same way that our parents briefed against one another. We're not going to use our offices to go at war to each, with each other. And yet, William has done that exact thing. William has given uh, the signal to strangers, to, to subordinates, to go after his brother, to go after his sister-in-law, and even to go after his children. And likewise, Charles marries a woman that made Princess Diana's life a living hell. And given the um, loss of prestige that he suffered because of her presence in his life, Charles hires a spin doctor, and along with Camilla, both Charles and Camilla and the spin doctor use, and dare I say, abuse their proximity to the two princes to build up their public image. They lied on Harry. They even lied on William. They actively participated in the destruction of Princess Diana's character. Tr Princess Diana was killed twice, once in the tunnel in Paris, and then the assassination of her character. And of course, as Harry said, I'm always worried about history repeating. To me, that sounds like he doesn't trust his family. And given their track record, I don't trust him either. So I, I wish I could say I was more moved by this confessional, but it only brings up more questions. It only gives me more questions. We're just not there yet. I don't trust those people. We're not there yet. Jennifer Ward, thank you so much for the super sticker. And SF says, three uh, December hackers tried to get records on Daily Mail. Okay. 
You know what? I'm going to have to look into that because this is the first I've heard of it. I've heard Hacker and I heard the hospital records, but the Daily Mail? Is that new? Oh, okay. All right. I'm going to do some research into that. Thank you so much. And thank you again for the super sticker and being a member. Um, Joan Garcia says they are a gang that couldn't shoot straight. <laughs> Joan Garcia, I tried to find that movie and I could not find the whole movie uh, without going through, um, uh, without you know paying for it. And since I already subscribe to stuff I don't watch, uh, if it's not free to me someplace, I don't know when I'll see it, but I'm going to have to try one more time and see if I can find uh, the whole and complete movie because it sounds very cool and I would love to see it. Thank you again. Okay, SF says, try to get records. On. Oh, did I go back the other way? Oh, I can see uh, you did that twice. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah, I was holding the uh, the the comments at a certain point and I didn't see it. Uh, Gracie Infowabi says, hope that we all can agree that the woman on the video uh, was not Kate Middleton. Uh, for today or for the farmer's market? Because if it's the farmer's market, I don't believe it was her. I really don't believe it was her. Uh, everything about that was screaming, that's not Kate Middleton, you know? And if that makes me sound like a conspiracy theorist, then so be it. But I don't believe that that was her. Thank you again. And Lizzie34, I am sure uh, it is uterine or ovarian cancer. Okay, thank you so much, Lizzie34. Again, we cannot be for sure. And as far as I'm concerned, until they post whatever medical records come up missing. Um, and even that, I, I don't know what to believe with these people. I don't even believe anybody ever tried to access her medical records. I believe that before this, that was an attempt, another attempt, one of many that we've had so far in 2024 to somehow elicit some type of sympathy for Kate Middleton. And every time that they've tried that, it has backfired. So I will be curious, uh, I am curious rather, to know whether or not if this is going to finally give them that type of sympathy that they have been asking for. There were no flowers seen entering that hospital. There was no vigil outside of the hospital. The only thing that we got from the hospital stay was, gosh, it must be nice to have the means of going to the best hospital in the world. And as a working tax paying subject of the sovereign, it's unfortunate that I can't depend on the same thing. That's the only thing that came out of that hospital stay. So, so far at a time when, you know, they say that the poverty for the average child in Britain has increased exponentially. And the unfortunate thing is there will be no focus on child poverty. We're going to be talking about Kate Middleton's cancer diagnosis. Okay? There's not going to be any attention paid to children living in poverty. People living uh, with no heat. People who can't afford food. And not to mention the ever-growing homeless population. There are people that are sleeping on sofas, sleeping on floors, sleeping in garden sheds because they cannot find affordable housing, but yet they work as often as possible. But there'll be no focus on that. We'll be talking about the royal family, the most privileged people on the face of the earth. Thank you, Lizzie. Uh, let's see, Pearl, Black Pearl says, now clear the way for Will to be a single father or grieved widower. Pearl, you know what? <laughs> From the very start, 
remember they ran those articles saying that William is not afraid to solo dad. And I was very suspicious about that. I was very suspicious about that. But I tell you, it will be a cold day in hell before somebody else allows their daughters to marry into that institution. Thank you, uh, Black Pearl. It is going to be a long time. Mama Jane, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a member and the super sticker. Greatly appreciate it. And C-Mac uh, 2 says, I don't trust anything comes out of the firm. Personally, I think announcing Kate has cancer worked for Charles, so it should work for Kate. Thank you, uh, C-Mac 2. And there again, there is a definite need to question everything that is coming down the pike because they have proven on so many occasions that the institution is not above lying or misleading the public to uh, elicit some type of, uh, or solicit that is some type of uh, sympathy or to lead people into looking another direction. And meanwhile, whatever it is they're trying to distract is actually going on. But, you know, I feel vindicated. And I'm sure a lot of you feel the same because if nothing else has come out of 2024, if nothing else has come out of these various phantom illnesses, until we know better, phantom illnesses, if nothing else has come out of this, the fact that so many people collectively have said, where is Kate and what about Megan? The what about Megan? How about Megan? You didn't say that when it came to Megan. You didn't care about Megan. You bullied Megan. Harry and Meghan was openly bullied by that institution, by that family, and yes, even by Kitty on the bench. They were openly and publicly bullied and humiliated during the Queen's funeral. And even though the royal family never gets papped, right, unless they want to be, Kate made it a point to make sure that her photo was in the paper within hours of the moment that it was leaked that Megan was told to stay home and that she wasn't welcomed at Balmoral. That's not my imagination. That happened. Uh, Liberia Rose says, this seems very odd. Hear, hear, Liberia Rose. And thank you so much for being a contributor to Royal Sussex. You guys, I, I have to let you know that in the very early days of Royal Sussex, Liberia Rose was very instrumental with guidance and advice um, for this channel. So uh, if you guys have been enjoying Royal Sussex, I can say without hesitation, that is one person that you, you um, should give credit to because she was very helpful. And thank you so much for your support. Oh, official Lauren Brown. Hope her children are okay. We have not seen the children. We have not seen the children. And because of the multiple shall I say, deceptive things that have happened in the past few months is probably a good idea because the children, you don't want to put children in a position where they would have to mislead or even lie for the sake of that institution. And one of the things that I, I felt awful about the photo or the photo gate is that it involved the children. It always comes back to the children. Um, those children deserve better than what that institution can offer. They really do. 
They deserve better than what that institution can offer. If there's one thing that that made me feel sick, I mean, physically ill, was when I heard this reporter say, oh, <laughs> I can't wait to see Louie. Louie is going to get that, uh, what do you call it, self-fulfilling prophecy, the same one that they pushed upon Harry to feel dumb, to feel less than, to feel incapable. Um, and thank God he was able to overcome all of what the attempts they made to make him a smaller person to try to dim his light. But Louie, I'm afraid, yeah, wasn't it Lorraine Kelly that called him a clown? And I'm not making that up. Lorraine Kelly of the Lorraine Show actually used the word clown in reference to Louie. Now, she was roundly criticized, but she said what a lot of people were thinking. Not us, of course, because some days I think the Sussex squad are actually more protective of the, uh, at the time, Cambridge kids than a great deal of the derangers or even the some of the old monarchists are. I mean, I really feel for those kids, and I hope that the air and the spare, which has plagued that institution for decades, if not centuries, I hope that um, that we've seen the last of it. I hope the last um, family member uh, that that happens to has been Harry. I hope he's the last of it, and I hope his efforts in court and of course, his struggle for uh, public opinion, I hope that that will prevent that from happening to the next generation, which is why I love, uh, hello, Ivy here. Um, Ivy of Sussex Global UK, you know, she does an in-depth study of human behavior. And in the early days of her channel, so much of that related to um, the royal family and the way that they have raised their children and such. And uh, it was like a breath of fresh air because uh, most of the things that Ivy says is not just for the royal family, but it's how we relate to the people in our lives, our co-workers and such. And that was highly invaluable. And I, I really enjoyed the content, which is why out of all the Sussex friendly spaces, that's the only one that I make a, a monthly contribution to. Um, um, I have a membership. Uh, let's see, Acilia Oashi, I love that name. Thank you so much for the Canadian, I believe it is, super sticker. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So, oh, Amber Rowan uh, says, I think about, uh, I'm sorry, I think about it. Uh, oh, okay, a, a little typo, I think. Uh, their credibility is so scorched that even her saying she has cancer is questionable. Thank you, Amber Rowan. Thank you. I, I hope I have articulated that properly. And yeah, thank you for saying it. But that's exactly what I'm trying to say. And I guess the fewer words I say it, the better it is for everybody. But um, yeah, that's it. Is that this is a corner that that institution, that Kensington Palace, this is a corner that they have painted themselves into. And I'm sure that at some point or another, I'm not going to say everything has been completely misleading, but they were trying to mislead people and they were trying to solicit sympathy where sympathy was not warranted, necessary, or, or even um, wise because they are the most privileged family in the land. And in a given day, how many times does Charles and William pop up and down in these uh, helicopters? They go every place in a private jet, but yet they preach to the rest of us about what we're doing to the planet. They are very privileged. You know, there's a big difference in someone dying in a hospital than it is someone uh, being a victim of a genocide 
but just the same death is death and grief is grief. But I would much rather be the loved one in a hospital than picking up pieces of a loved one in the field of battle or genocide. Um, but for what is worth, grief is grief. And they are still people. And, you know, I do see them as human beings, but I don't have to like or approve of what they do because they are the royal family. I know what they've done to Harry and Meghan and to their children and even, of course, Doria. I know what they've done in conjunction with the tabloids. And so if I'm struggling with the way I feel about Kate's statement, I'm not prepared to apologize for it. I'm just saying I have questions. Thank you, Amber Rowan. Uh, Lisette Zog says, just uh, too hard to believe. Sorry, not sorry. Thank you so much, Lisette, and thank you so much for being honest. First and foremost, honesty is acceptable. Honesty is necessary because there's no sense in anybody saying what they don't believe when it, especially as i say when it comes to the most privileged people in the land because i can i could spend the day trying to articulate exactly how cruel this institution has been to megan when megan said that she had a notion to, to commit self-harm, to put it mildly. One after the other, those royal reporters that are saying, leave Kate alone, Kate is being bullied. One after the other, they went on television and said, I don't believe her. I don't believe her. And of course, we find out that a lot of these royal reporters with their burner accounts that they are actually exchanging ideas with the derangers, with the Megan haters, with the bashers and the bullies from the internet. Some things that are trending in the Twitter streets become a column within a day. And that's not by accident because their constituents are racist, MAGA Brexiteering bullies. So again, thank you for your honesty, Lisette. Uh, Love Wins Movement says, I will say, uh, uh, stay on, say on the record, um, I do believe her. I think her statement is the most genuine statement she has ever made. Uh, that said, she deserves no more concern than anyone else I have. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Love Wins Movement. Okay. Uh, Mackenzie says, cancer is the, uh, what is it, the ultimate pity card, and they messed up, messed it up uh, from day one. Uh, thank you, Mr. Toxin. Uh, as I say, if it's true, what took so long? If indeed it is true, what took so long? I love the fact that countless people that has never, ever uh, been a part of the conversation with the royal family or with the Sussexes, that countless people have said, where was all this sympathy for Megan? The other day I showed you Victoria Newton on the, um, oh gosh, whatever radio show, where she was so agitated with all these conspiracy theories. She was so triggered because nobody was giving Kate the sympathy that she deserves. The anguish that the supporters of the Sussexes have gone through, especially during the funeral, during the Queen's funeral, and the only thing that was worse than that was during Megan's pregnancy. 
when for months we didn't see Megan. But in just the same, there was 30, 40, 50 articles a day from one newspaper with one negative story after the other. Now, people in the institution were told by Megan, I need help. I'm not well. I, I need therapy. I need to, to see a doctor. And they said, don't do it, because how will that look for the institution? Meanwhile, there was no statement from the palaces to the papers telling people to lay off of Megan. Instead, I, I can't even say what I believe they were hoping the outcome would be, not just to Megan, but to the un unborn child. And here I am right now today, <clears throat> put in a position where I have a platform. That's what's different, is that I didn't have a platform at that time. But now I do. And, and as such, I want to be as responsible as possible. But this platform was established to give whatever protection to Harry and Meghan that I can. So I'm struggling right now. And I'm not sorry that I'm struggling, but I am. My humanity versus the crime that I have seen committed against Harry and Meghan day after day after day from an institution, a racist institution. Well, which one? The media? <laughs> Or, or the royal family. Okay, let me make that plural. Racist institutions. The most vulnerable time in a woman's life is during pregnancy. And they showed her no mercy. So much so that Megan has been pregnant three times, but she only has two children. Do the math. Nancy Austin, thank you so much for the super sticker. And let's see, this black girl's life. God help them if that cancer uh, admission video is deep fake or the cancer is a straight, uh, is a straight up straight? Well, is a lie, is a straight lie. Thank you so much, uh, this uh, black girl's life. Yeah, I hope they're not lying uh, because there's nothing to play with. Uh, Lady T says she is saying she has cancer, but receiving preventative chemo, according to your expert friend, her chemo is just in case. Uh, do you have or not? Do you have cancer or not? Thank you, uh, Lady T. Exactly. Do you have cancer or not? That is a good question. That is a good question. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask that question. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, hello, uh, Raffaella Bertoni. Preventative chemo treatment is a real thing. If you follow Dr. John Baptiste, you learn his wife has been given the same prescription. Thank you. Um, uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Fisher Lauren Brown. Uh, oh, okay. There may have been a cancer in the uh, tumor removed during surgery, but they have started preventative chemo to prevent the return or spreading of cancer. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I suppose that makes sense. Yeah, I don't have enough information to be honest with you. I just, the only thing that I have is what I feel in my gut. Um, there we have, a couple of headlines in touch was going to go. Well, they have gone with this It's over. Kate takes off her ring. William fights for ring ring. Hold on a second. That is a good question. Is she wearing her ring? The embattled princess takes historic action to protect her kids. 
her uh, title and her future as palace staff scrambles to hide the truth, whatever the truth is. And again, again, we do recall that in 2023, they kept saying, big announcement, big announcement. In 2023, they kept saying that there was going to be a big announcement. Uh, let me see. C.S. Hopper says voice sounds different. Uh, let me see what a major surgery she had. What type of cancer does she have? Too many lies. What's with all the lies beforehand is weird. Again, um, C.S., very, very legitimate. There has been so many occasions where it seems like things like the, the picture of her and her mom in the car that seemed like that was designed to mislead us, right? Especially that unnecessarily grainy photo. Even her mother's image was grainy in direct sunlight. So you can't say the lighting conditions were the reason, right? And then, of course, that photo was not approved of, even though it was supposed to be the paparazzi. Then there was the photo of Kate in the car with William. William's looking down at his phone, and Kate just happens to turn her head to a brick wall. That photo should have never, ever have seen the light of day. And whoever signed off on that photo, which was set up by the palace. I don't care what they say. That was a setup. Whoever set that up. The problem with that is. Why would you put a photo out there to lend to the mystery of it? That she has her head turned as though that was going to satisfy people. Then we have this bizarre. Uh, Thunderbolt walk out of this, this, this farmer's market for someone who is so ill. This person was moving so fast. And then, of course, there's the odd thing that no one around even acknowledged them, even though people in the community should know the royals when they see them. You couldn't see any security, but I suppose they may have been somewhere. And also, it just didn't look like Kate Middleton. And so when somebody says this is the fifth Kate Middleton that I've seen, that is true. This is the fifth Kate Middleton. Now, if they were all Kate Middleton, I mean, because this Kate Middleton looks very Kate Middleton. But the one in car with mom, with that bloated face... That didn't look like Kate. And the fact that collectively so many people just, that's not Kate. That's no accident. As a matter of fact, it may have been very deliberate. For what remains to be seen. Uh, it's not Kate Missington. Face is different. See what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Oh, no, VD. Let's see. MB MS oh, thank you, uh, Terry Carver. MSNBC is now, uh, is now, I mean, it's carrying it now, but my reception is so bad in this wind. Oh, thank you, Novi D. Uh, let me see. Yeah, apparently that's a thing, Alita. I've never heard of that either, but apparently that's a thing. Preventative chemotherapy. I suppose that's going to be a big talking point for the next few days. And as someone said, did she or did she not have cancer? Now, if they did remove uh, tissue that later proved to be cancerous and they're giving her this treatment to make sure it doesn't come back, well, then I suppose that is a thing. Never heard of it, but that doesn't mean that it's not true. So I can't uh, disagree with something that uh, apparently is a thing. So, but we got to this point 
we we're in this place right now because of the continued deception and misleading from Kensington Palace. And make no mistake, you all, Kensington Palace and Clarence House or Buckingham Palace, I'm still not sure exactly which is correct uh, for uh, Charles and, and, and Camilla, the queen consort. I don't know which is correct. But the various houses of Windsor over there, not over here, the various houses of Windsor are at war with each other. They seem to be at war. And do recall that when Charles and Camilla was looking forward to owning the news cycle by going to the Chelsea Flower Show, it was Kate Middleton that showed up early, exhausted all of the photographers and reporters, and just like a on a blaze of glory, the same way she swept in, she swept out, <clears throat> leaving king and queen consort a bit bitter and disappointed. And that same energy was used while Kate was supposedly in the hospital where Camilla swept into the scene and she was in and out the hospital, thus ensuring that people were aware of the fact that, no, we Windsors can see each other in the hospital and I am here and William is not. Where is William while his wife is in hospital? You see what I mean? So they are at war. All of this does not mean that Kate doesn't have cancer. I'm not saying that. It doesn't mean that she doesn't have cancer. But it's a very difficult thing to believe considering everything that has been said and done and the deliberate attempts to mislead the public. And then there's that very long pause in between the January 17th announcement, and the March 22nd confession. Exactly what happened in the meantime? Why wait so long and why not tell us what type of cancer it is? That is going to be the two questions, is why did you wait so long and what kind of cancer it is? Along with other things like, is that an AI video? Is that really Kate Middleton? Um, what else are they trying to hide? There's going to be a lot of things like that, that, um, that people are going to ask questions about and rightly so these are public figures and whatever your feelings are about cancer, about Kate, about the Royal family, uh, about Harry and Megan, whatever your feelings are, these are people that are public figures that are supported by taxpayers' money. And as such, the taxpayers do have a right to know, and I don't agree with this blanketed privacy over all things Kate Middleton just because they say so. I don't agree that they have a right to privacy. Only people that are private citizens, like Harry and Meghan, only those people have a right to their privacy. But Remember, they made it a point to say that Harry and Meghan are no longer working royals, that Charles, Camilla, Will, Kate, um, the, the Edinburghs, the Gloucesters, the Kents, well, not the Kents anymore, but the Gloucesters. Oh, yeah, the Kent, the Kent, my, very rare. But those are the ro working royals. So count out the Sussexes. They are no longer working royals. So they have rights to the privacy. They don't get it. There's constant speculation over everything they say and do. But the same people that have been on this one-sided war against the Sussexes, all of a sudden, wants everybody's sympathy and understanding. That is going to be a stretch. That is going to be a struggle. And not everyone will accept it at face value. So I'm just speaking what I feel and what I believe to be true is that you can't have it both ways. You can't condemn 
someone because of their race, because they're American, because they, they're passionate, because they're independent. You can't condemn that person and then take someone who's never worked, right? Who's, who's never um, uh, punched a, a time clock in their lives that has married into an institution that has been the very embodiment of racism and expect that person to be left alone, especially when they have directly uh, benefited from said hate campaign. It's just not that easy. If anything else happens, I'm here for it. I, I want to know everything, but I'm so glad that people have, that the public at large has been awakened to the constant mistreatment that Harry and Meghan have suffered. That gives me comfort. JSC says, hi, Baron and Sussex Wide. Surprising news. I hope Kate is not lying. Cancer is not a joke. Only God knows what is really going on in that family. Uh, JSC, thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing it back to, to one very important thing, and that is God. God shall be the judge. Not us, not them, God. That is, that is the final word. Thank you so much. So interesting, your initials. Um, that you bring it to the conversation, but thank you. Um, Lord, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but yes, thank you for that. <clears throat> uh, let me see here. Uh, John Garcia says, Baron, interesting timing for Kate uh, news today, the same day that Prince Harry and Meghan attended the Kinsey Collection showcasing black art and history. Uh, you know, normally I would say that, but this is so much more. This is so much more. I mean, you can hide the Hindenburg behind this announcement because I, I don't doubt that the timing was designed to give cover, but whether it was designed to distract from the Sussexes, this is so much bigger than that. This is something that I think evolved from the um, a, a number of things, including the TMZ, because who's not afraid of TMZ? You know, you could be riding along in your car and listening to the radio. You ain't thinking about nothing in the world. And then all of a sudden, TMZ tell you you dead. Now, <laughs> if TMZ announced a death, and it just happened to be your your name or anybody else's name, even if I call that person and I say, oh, you're okay? Yeah. Uh-uh. Did you hear what TMZ said about you? So people are afraid of TMZ. I know it's owned by Rupert Murdoch, <laughs> but I'm convinced that there are people who, who still have to find out that they did from TMZ. That's how how um, they have become such a big part of the news stream is that people ask, well, what did TMZ say? So if TMZ says that that is a Kate video and people start doubting TMZ, then it's no wonder that they had to come out with the confession today. I think that that, I really do believe TMZ was going to be a problem because once TMZ started saying, okay, we're not sure. I don't think that's Kate Middleton. I don't think they had any place else to go, but make this confession. Now I think it's been days in the works, but I, I would say that it was probably started. They probably started writing out the rough draft of her statement when they heard that TMZ was going to make a video. And then once that video was aired last night, I think they've decided, okay, we got to do it tomorrow. That's what I believe. So I, this one, I'm going to say, is not to distract from the Sussexes. 
Uh, the photo on Mother's Day, yes. This, I think, is in response to TMZ. Thank you so much for your comment. Yep, I think TMZ was going to be a big problem for them and that whatever came Okay, sorry, I did it again. I accidentally logged myself out. Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, let me get my slides back up. I just literally logged myself out. Uh, my screen is very sensitive, and I got to see if there's something I could do to adjust that. Uh, thank you again, Joan Garcia. I literally logged myself out. Oh, man. Um, well, I wasn't logged out, but I, I swiped away from the screen and it was back to I had to, you know, get back in. So uh, let me do that. And I see there uh, was at least one or two super chats I missed. Super stickers. OK, let me see here. How far back can I go? Oh, oh, my goodness. Wow. This, okay, I really messed that up. Okay. Oh, my goodness. You know what? I got to step on it because I am so far behind. And I always say it sounds redundant when I say I have a little behind. If you saw how big my behind was, you'd be like, really? Really? But I am a little behind. <laughs> See what I mean? It sounds weird when I say that. Uh, educate you too. Thank you so much for the super sticker. And it's funny how when they look bad and can't control it, they all come up with cancer. Next, Camilla is going to have uh, is going to have it. Sean, you know what? <clears throat> Someone said on Twitter today that do you recall when they claimed that Megan and Harry were a cancer on the institution. And when I heard that, I got a chill because I do recall when somebody said with their chest stuck out, stuck out full throated, made a statement that called them a cancer on the institution. And now look at what's happening to the institution. Kind of weird, ain't it? Thank you, uh, Sean. And Reba Henderson, 18 months membership baron. I pray for the Wells children. When they leave Harry and Meghan alone, I will consider not dragging the leftover royals. Truth is not in those, uh, not in, what is it? Truth is not in into those people. Thank you so much. Um, I think there's people, right? Uh, thank you so much. No, that's not people. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the abbreviation, but thank you, uh, Reva Henderson. And KA, thank you for the super sticker and being a member. And uh, Black Queen says, Baron, statement from Her Majesty. <laughs> Is it from 1992? Is a year that I shan't look back upon with undiluted pleasure. <laughs> that Queen. Uh, let's see. Thank you, uh, Black Queen. And let's see. Amber Rowan says, for your information, new narrative per daily fail is Harry should. Oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry. Harry should fly over and be at Kate's bedside. Kate is not Harry's wife. Where's William, thank you, Amber Rowan. Are you flipping kidding me? Are you flipping kidding me? Let me take a look at that. Let me see. Okay, I see TMZ. Meghan Markle, Prince Harry, wish Kate well after cancer news, praying for healing. Okay. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry just wish Kate Middleton all of the best amid her cancer diagnosis 
and they're especially hoping the public lets her deal with this in peace. Duke and Duchess of Sussex will uh, tell M I'm saying I'm sorry. Duke of Duchess of Sussex tell TMZ, we wish health and healing for Kate and the family and hope they are able to do so privately and in peace, which is, again, more than they ever offered the Sussexes, which was nothing but contempt and bullying, but I digress. As we uh, reported, Meghan and Harry were out and about in L.A. Thursday night at an art exhibit, and there was no indication that uh, the Kate News was in on the radar, unclear if they were aware of her diagnosis or not. But in any case, they're sending their love. Hold on, let me drink some water. <clears throat> of course, Harry jetted over to London last month to see his father amid his own cancer diagnosis, his father, of course, but again, we have no idea what King Charles knew about Kate's situation and what, if anything, may have been relayed to Harry at that time. Um, his trip was very quick. Yep, in and out in about 24 hours, wasn't it? It goes without saying that Prince Harry and Willie Leakes uh, relationship has been fractured in recent years, especially... Okay, I don't want to read all that part of it. But uh, yeah, so that's it. That's it. That's what um, I didn't realize that TMZ had that until I tried to look at the fail. Uh, William discovered Kate had cancer before he pulled out of his Constantine Greece memorial. Okay, if that's what they say. That's what they say. Uh-huh. I'm just looking at the recent headlines. Okay. Oh, I see what you said. Will Harry fly back to see his sister-in-law? And my answer is, I hope not. I hope not. That... That right there would be a bit weird. I think he needs to stay away from there. I think he needs to stay away from there because that family does not miss a beat when it comes to Harry and Meghan. I don't care what it is. They have absolutely nothing to say. There's no public statements. So I say keep it coming. How the world found out about Kate's devastating cancer diagnosis. These are the moments Britain's broadcasters, including ITV, Sky News, and BBC, broke Kate Middleton's cancer news and how the rest of the world found out. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a feeding frenzy for the Daily Mail. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Amber Rowan. Uh, that was very helpful because I found that other stuff as well. So I, I really do appreciate that. And thank you so much for your comment. So, uh, mm. okay. Uh, and she was reading from a teleprompter sincerely. <laughs> thank you. <Sha. laughs> Queen out. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Lisette Zog says, why only now? Something uh, just doesn't feel right. Lisette, I agree. I agree. The timing is very, very curious. And YM Joy says, Baron, today is my birthday. As a gift, can you let us know why Alex Murdoch thinks about uh, what, oh, <laughs> what Alex Murdoch thinks about this uh Something is still off to me. Um, well, of course, if it was Alex Murdoch, he would say, hello, this is Alex Murdoch, and I'm up in it bad. I'm up in it real bad. I'm up in it bad. Hello? I don't know. Yes, the dog saw me. Yeah, if you mean that Alex Murdoch. <laughs> 
<laughs> Who for some reason sounds a lot like Mr. Haney on Green Acres. I still haven't worked that out, but happy birthday to you, uh, YM Droid, and many happy returns of the day. Sorry that is is you know that this announcement came out today, but um uh thank you so much uh for the super chat. And let's see, Zena Hill is it Hilbert? Hibbert? Hibbert, thank you so much for the super sticker, and thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And Coco uh, says, is this a trick to try and get Harry and Megan over there? You know, <clears throat> I'm not going to say what I hope is the eventual outcome of this because Harry loves his family, right? And Harry is hoping to bring his kids back to the UK. They could do something with this. I'll just say they can do something with this. And I will leave it to your individual imaginations to say what that something could or should be. But if there were ever a time when some very bad people could make things right again, They should take advantage of it. Now, William's track record leads me to believe that he won't allow it. And uh, Charles, his indecisiveness leads me to believe that he would not allow it to happen. But they could make things right with the Sussexes. They really could. They couldn't possibly give them back everything that they've lost because they have paid a terrible price for this one-sided war from Kensington Palace. They have paid a terrible price because of Camilla and Charles's public image in the wake of Princess Diana's untimely, unnecessary, very strange, and should I say conspiratorial and so many other adjectives that you could attach to how she died mysteriously in that tunnel in Paris, they can do some things to, to attempt to make things right. And I'll leave it there. Uh, thank you, Coco. Uh, Susie Q, so glad you're here. When they said she had surgery, a pathology report would have... Uh, wouldn't uh, take so long. This is BS. Thank you, Susie Q. Again, what took so long? There's no shame in admitting that one has cancer. So what took so long? The timing is very curious. And again, I say, it must have been something that triggered them with that TMZ report. And I'm sure there was more. But there was something with that TMZ report that triggered them to rush and put something out there. If this would have been said Mother's Day, it would have made a, a greater difference as opposed to that photo, which really kicked the conspiracy into high gear or con conspiracies into high gear. Uh, thank you, Susie Q. And thank you for being a member, of course. Uh, Zena Hibbert, Hibbert says, uh, Megan was asked to speak out for Kate, but did Kate speak out for Megan in her time of need? Hell no, absolutely not. She did not speak out for. Um, again, the direct benefit of the beneficiary for most of the malicious things that has been said and done to Megan has been Kate. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Black Queen says, Baron, statement from Harry and Megan, not her majesty. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> when I saw Sean and I saw that, I was like, the queen is back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for uh, pointing it out. 
Okay, uh, let me get caught up with these comments then because, gosh, I was so far, far behind. Uh, oh, Legs, it has been a minute. Where have you been? If ever we needed the insight from Legs, it is on a day like today. Uh, Legs says, did the son call in a favor? Harry lawsuit. Ooh, yes. Harry's lawsuit. Um, this is curious timing considering that the court has directly mentioned Rupert Murdoch, who owns the sun. Not the sun in the sky, although he has put in a bid for it. But yes, legs. You see what I mean, legs. Do you see what I mean? At certain times and certain places, that insight of yours is invaluable. Thank you so much. Or should I say most times in most places, highly invaluable. My goodness. Wow. I did not think about that. See what I mean? When it comes to cover, this does satisfy a lot of things. It does satisfy a lot of things, more things than we should even think about at this time. So yesterday, this article, Leave Kate Middleton Alone, Archbishop of Canterbury Calls Conspiracy Theories About the Princess, Nothing More Than Old Fashioned Village Gossip. As Keir Starmer, I think he's running for prime minister. Is that right? urges public to butt out and let her rest. Online speculation. You know, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait to get on TikTok. I cannot wait to get on TikTok because this is going to divide opinions. This is going to divide opinions. Uh, Vinny Blair says, my takeaway uh, from the whole thing is that royal racism gives rise to cancer cause only uh, the royal races got cancer. Next time, do better. <laughs> okay, Vinny Blair. <laughs> Baron, so we can't drag Kate anymore with this news coming out. Dang. Um... What was that song? I got to be me. I got to be me. Thank you, B. Martim. Mystic Toxin says, I'm not uncommon for uh, bodies uh, to show on Palace. Uh, let me see. It's not uncommon for bodies to show up on. Okay, got you. Uh, if you mean that, if you're talking about how they have found cadavers on palace grounds, I've heard that before. I've heard that before. And they were not um, from antiquity. These were, you know, fresh cadavers. So, yeah, that is one of the strange things that seems to follow this family is the mysterious deaths that have occurred. Yep, that is one of those things. Uh, Archbishop of Canterbury has no credibility. Thank you, uh, Mystic Toxin. Let me see. <laughs> VS speaks royally. Hey, VS. Thank you for being here. VS, were you on already? I um I was prepping and everything, and then this came up, and I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to talk about the other stuff, so let me just go on. So Harry and Megan um sent uh some kind words to that family. You guys, in spite of everything that I'm feeling right now. In spite of everything that I'm feeling about that institution, I'm going to still go on the record and say, if if this situation, if oh God, I can't I can't get that word out of my mouth. Never mind. <laughs> I tried. I can't do it. I can't do it. 
That's why I said I'll leave it to your individual imaginations. I can't get it out because I just don't trust that family. I don't trust them. I do not trust them. If anything, I would see them taking advantage of Harry and Meghan. And I don't apologize for how I feel because of how contemptible they've been, how nasty, cruel, and surly, and mean-spirited they've been. I do not apologize for feeling the way I feel, but uh, I can't say it. I'm sorry. I can't. I want to say something positive and reassuring about what is possible at this time, but considering um, who the family or how the, I can't, I can't, I just can't. I, I, at that point, me who has a gift for gab, I am falling short. I don't have anything to contribute. Not to that. Um, I see, I can't even say it. <laughs> I can't even say it. I want to. And I'm trying to force myself, but I can't. I can't. I have, I'm suffering from a, a type of PTSD when it comes to the royal family and the way they treated the Sussexes. Now, I know that that's a bit strong to say PTSD and that that phrase or that diagnosis has been used abundantly about things that it should not. But there is, until I know a better word, gun shy, skittish, until I know a better word, I just have to say that I'm going to be forever skeptical of everything with that institution. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me see. Did I miss that? Oh, okay. I see where I am right now. Uh, uh, Kim says, my hubs uh, said the video's fake. The bench is, oh, is off on one side. Flowers, nothing moving in the background. He also asked why her hair part looks like that. Ooh, I'm getting the creeps, Kim. I'm getting I'm getting the creeps. I am getting the creeps. That just okay, let me let me take a look. Let me take a look because now you got me curious. Now you got me curious. I gotta watch the video again. Ah oh, man, this is more attention than than um than Kitty has ever gotten in life. And Hmm. Okay, you know what? Now I'm having trouble finding the video. It seems like, oh, you know what? Let me just go to Omid Scobie. I know it's on his uh, Twitter. Omid. Yeah, but now you got me curious, and, and now I got to see. I'm watching it right now. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Okay. I don't see anything moving. I must admit, I don't see anything moving. Not now thing. Okay, I just noticed um a, a something just a bug just flew by. And I see yeah, I see a couple of bugs. Okay, I see a couple of bugs. And I thought I saw like one piece of fiber of her jumper or sweater, I just saw one little piece of fiber 
blow with the wind and maybe a split in. Okay, the hair is moving. The hair is moving. Like from the wind kind of moving or breeze or whatever. So, yeah. Other than that, I nothing in the background, nothing, none of the plants behind her, none of the plants behind her are moving. Which makes, oh, you know, this, I wonder if that is a green screen. No, probably not. I mean, I'm sure the intention is that she's outside. So, yeah, um, kind of hard to say. Interesting, though. Yeah, kind of hard to say. Well, like I said, I can't wait to see what the world's reaction is going to be to this. Um, that is going to be interesting. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just take a look through the Twitter. Uh, Omit Scobie. Oh, no, that is from yesterday. I'm still on Omit, so I got to get to like the home page just to take a look at a few things. If you guys have just joined us, oh, by the way, thank you so much, Kim. If you guys have just joined us, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure if you're not a member that you consider subscribing to Royal Sussex. Uh, thank you to all of the uh members of Royal Sussex. There are subscribers, which is everybody I, that's uh, able to comment. And then, of course, there are the members who have um, gone that extra mile to support this channel with a paid membership, which starts as low as $4.99 and goes up to $99. Again, thank you for those who have supported the channel and for those who are considering supporting Royal Sussex, uh, if you go to the um, homepage for Royal Sussex, uh, you'll find that there is a link that says members or memberships. Let's see. Jill Biden says, you are brave and we love you, Jill. Of course you do. Uh, let me see here. I'm looking at some of the public statements. Yeah, the, you, you know, there's going to be an outpour. There's going to be an outpour. And by the way, you guys, I am going to come back later so I can talk about Harry and Meghan at the um, art uh, exhibit from yesterday or last night, among other things. So if you're wondering if we're going to talk about that, I am definitely going to do that. And before the news came out, I was actually working on a pre-recorded video um, that I was also, um, I'm actually about halfway done with it. So I'm going to share that also. So uh, if you come back later, uh, definitely we are going to talk and um, it will not be in regards to uh, Kate Middleton's statement today. Uh, maybe it later in the um, in the broadcast uh, we'll talk about that. But for for the time being, um, we're going to just stick with this topic, and then later we will talk about the Sussexes because they had a really really big night, and I will not let that be lost um, on today's announcement. That I'm not going to do, but because um, this is going to dominate the news for a couple of days. But Royal Sussex uh, predominantly supports the Sussexes. And in general, anybody who is being bullied by a system that is oppressive or racist and so on. So sexist, misogynist and et cetera. Oh, Max Foster, that person. Oh, I cannot stand him. Um, he's quoting the statement from Harry and Meghan. You know, I don't care what the news is. You know they're going to drag the Sussexes into it 
and make them uh, the focus of everyone's conversation. That much I am sure of. At some point, the focus is going to shift over. And I hope it doesn't. That being said, I hope it does not. Um, if what Kate say is true, um, I hope she gets everything that, that she deserves from her statement. I hope she gets everything she deserves. Everything she has coming for, for her statement. Uh, thank you again, Kim. And I hope that, that nobody is misleading. That I do hope that nobody's misleading. Uh, CNN just reported that Harry and Megan send their well wishes in a published statement. Thank you, Black Girl's Life. This Black Girl's Life, thank you very much. And uh, let me see. The Derangers are nitpicking the Sussex... Ugh are nitpicking the Sussex's statement, complaining they use Kate, not Catherine, um, F the haters. Thank you, uh, slow burn shipper. Thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, yeah. They, uh, especially the derangers who are supposed to love Kate. They're going to make their conversation about Harry and Megan. That is almost a certainty that they'll do that. Let me see. Last night, Prince Harry and Meghan made a joint appearance at the uh, SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles to give a joint speech during the Kinsey African American Art and History Collection event. Harry and Meghan are thriving in the USA, folks. Okay, I'm just reading something that someone tweeted. Ah, they look good too. They look amazing. And yes, Megan is wearing Carolina Herrera. She is wearing a Carolina Herrera. As a matter of fact, I will probably do a short video about that separate from the live that I do later. Yeah, I would probably do a short video about that. Wow, looks like an amazing night. I wonder if the people knew that they were going to be there. Now, uh, right here, when the option is between transparency and manipulation, option one, King Charles leaves the London clinic three days after prostate surgery on the 29th of January, 2024. Option two, Kate Middleton leaves London clinic 10 days after abdominal surgery, 29 January, 2024. Kate Middleton, uh, 4th of March, 2024, is seen driving with her mother allegedly, supposedly. And then, of course, Mother's Day, which is March 10th, 2024, uh, UK Mother's Day, Kate Middleton um, or somebody at the palace submits that questionable photo. And then on the 16th of March, that is when someone supposed to be Kate Middleton and Prince William were seen leaving the farmer's market. So the option two claims that lack credibility, questionable claim, outright lie, questionable claim, gave birth to conspiracy theory. Now, that is the words of one of the squaddies. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to save that to share later because that, uh, that is very helpful. It helps to, to establish the timeline as to why there is the um, conspiracy theories in the first place. Yeah. Or in some cases, should I just say why there is varied opinion? I'm not prepared to say conspiracy theory. I'm just going to say why there is varied opinions. Because the opinions definitely are varied. And I don't think anybody is going to agree on anything 100. 
I mean, there are a lot of squatties that say, yes, I believe she has cancer, but I do find the timing rather odd. And that's okay. That is okay to question. That is okay to question. Okay. Wow, this is very interesting now. Super, super interesting. Okay, uh, thank you, Slow Burn Shipper. Let me get back to your comments because I am just sitting here lost in the Twitter right now. Um, let me see. Okay. Let's see. B. Martim says, uh, well, we found her on the, on, well, let me see. We found her on to the next episode. <laughs> yes. Thank you, B. Martim. Okay. I think I should consider, uh, taking a break for now and then we can come back and talk about our Sussexes because um, that is what we're here for. The royal family is definitely of interest to us because of Harry and Meghan and because you know what they say, keep your enemies close and your friends closer. No, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So for that reason, we keep an eye on everybody. Uh, uh, yes, I, I heard that um, comment from that person. And, of course, comparisons are going to be made. And the big difference is uh, Martha Stewart was based on television, and Megan is continuing from where she left off with differences, of course, from her TIG. So I think that that is inaccurate to, to, um, to, to say, well, and I'm not saying that you're saying that, but the person who made that comment, um, or the persons, because a few of those royal reporters have done that. I think they're being very short sighted. It's a, it's, it's another way to try to diminish Megan and to put her down is to say that she wants to be this person or that person. Uh, Megan wants to be Megan. She's not trying to be other people. Megan was special uh, from the start, and she continues to glow, and she continues to rise and sail above all of those haters. So, uh, Chantel number six says, in my opinion, now that her facial bruises have been healed, thus giving William a pass, Kate was able to negotiate a sweet financial compensation package in exchange for her cancer video, allegedly, which, of course, means that um, her parents should be pretty well taken care of, allegedly, because of who wants to marry a future billionaire. <laughs> who wants to marry a future billionaire? Okay, folks, I am going to uh, take a break for now. We're going to come back later. Don't ask me when because I'm not sure, but it may be in, a, in at least three hours from now. At least three hours. I'll try to keep it restricted to about three hours, uh, but we will be back. Uh, thank you again so much for your contributions and your participation. Please make sure you hit the like button. But uh, the other thing is, I'm I'm going to be working. I just want to get caught up on the rest of the news. Um, thank you all so much for your honesty. Thank you for your honesty. Whatever it is you feel or whatever it is you're not feeling, whatever you had to share is valid and hopefully honest. Um, and, and I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you, JSC. I'll see you all later. 
but give it at least three hours, okay? Love you guys. I'm going to go, and uh, we won't do the prolonged exit. I will uh, just bid you uh, farewell for now. And um, again, thank you, moderators, as always, for keeping this a safe space. I promise you guys, this would not be possible uh, without the moderators. So very important to the su success of any of these online platforms. Okay.